saw a Bilderberger in the flesh if they weren't inside a vehicle. This year, they went on walkabout numerous times. We had several different press areas, one immediately adjacent to the hotel, so we could see them right on the patio. And people don't appreciate, I think, how difficult that is and how rare that is. I mean, Hannah Borno compared it to spotting wild animals, and that's that's precisely... Uh, they are kind of like wild that. animals, aren't they? <laughs> exactly, but it's, it's so difficult to get them on camera in the flesh. The fact that we had the press access to do that was a big victory. Yeah, and the fact that we saw balls carrying in these volumes of paperwork, I think that was very telling. They go in, that combined with the fact that they're walking about and jogging about freely without any bodyguards, without even a companion attendee from Bilderberg. What do you make of that, Richie Allen? The fact that these people who have erected, they, they always spend millions of dollars to create these, these walls and security. They've had an army of police there, and yet they just walk out on their own and go jogging. What do you make of that? The only thing you can make of that, David, the only logical conclusion to that is is that they're somehow trying to play down the importance of it. Um, and by lessening the security on there and by doing what Paul said there, um, you know, um, being a little bit more up close and personal, people getting access to them, seeing them. I mean, you said you, they, they couldn't be seen in Watford. I mean, I noticed that last year. Uh, so you can only conclude that, yeah, they're thinking, well, um, we need to be a little bit more um, less menacing, a little bit more less threatening, make um, as little of this as we possibly can. And I mean, ultimately, they want us to believe that it's, it, it's an annual fraternity. Isn't that right, David? That's what they want us to believe, ultimately. Um, right. it, it's, it's where we can meet and speak freely without worrying about the press misrepresenting us. And all we're doing is sharing ideas because, you know, because we've all got these high powerful, uh, sorry, all powerful high pressure jobs. Uh, so this is a kind of a get to know you session once every year. Now we know that's a load of baloney, we know that. Um, so I presume that somewhere in the, st the steering committee must have got together and said, you know what, let's come at this a little bit differently this year. I mean, we've seen on one or two other alternative news sites, I won't mention them, but we've seen um, one or two of the um, 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 uh, attendees being, you know, being grabbed and interviewed, uh, even if the interviews were very brief. So that staggered me, there's no doubt about that, because I've not been watching Bilderberg as often or as much as, as you guys have in Alex. Um, I've come to this arena only in the last few years, but, but what I have seen in the last few years is exactly as you described, high walls, lots of um, security, menacing. I mean, we all remember years ago, Jim Tucker being trailed through the Portuguese countryside by men in uh, blacked out sedans and all that sort of stuff. You know, That's so right. yeah, maybe there, may, may, maybe there's a concerted effort to uh, well, 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 let's play this down a bit. Yeah, for years they pretended that it didn't exist. They kept the press at bay. They they tried that sort of thing, but they couldn't get away with that anymore because I think to a large degree. All of the attention that happened last year in the UK. So even though we didn't have a lot of individuals turning up, they came out with a very different approach this time. As as Paul pointed out, it's really kind of a charm offensive, trying to make themselves look transparent. But I thought it was kind of interesting when Samson came out and talked to us, the uh, Dutch uh, leader, and he was talking about these focus groups, how they constantly they went from one meeting to the other meeting. It sounded very, very much like the kind of Delphi control techniques that the Rand Corporation has developed for pushing Agenda 21 at local community meetings. And it looks like that's what they're doing to me. It looks like you've got a core group of globalists who are bringing in people, kind of testing the water, seeing if they can get them to buy into a consensus. And then if they do, they bring them on to additional meetings, a, a trilateral commission meeting, a council on foreign relations meeting creating these kinds of relationships that allow them to essentially pull people into a kind of a phony consensus. Would you say that's what you, what's happening? I, certainly there's not some leader of the I'll world that's sitting what, there. David. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kissing your backside, but that's one of the smartest things I've heard suggested about Bilderberg. Because we have to remember, these politicians, greedy and filthy and corrupt though they are, ultimately they're human beings. And some of the things that's on the agenda for us in the next 25, 30, 40 years are horrifying things that would shake any human being to their foundation, irrespective of their, their um, you know, their psychological state. 
So it makes perfect sense to me that there's some sort of indoctrination going on there. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, bringing these people in. Um, I wouldn't use the word brainwashing them, but yeah, browbeating them with um, with ideas and getting yeah. them to come around to ideas that that ordinarily, if they were with their families, their wives, their girlfriends, their husbands, they wouldn't do. Hang on, we got Richie Allen with us, as well as Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. We're talking about how Bilderberg changed this year. We're going to be right back after the break. Stay with us. It's all about building consensus, and these people control a lot of assets. How long Stay would tuned. you last if all grocery stores cease to exist? Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good. Like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers they were shipped in. If they keep in touch with you, you get your emails, you get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies. Many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. was a highway man along the coach roads i did ride welcome back to the alex jones show i'm david knight here in austin and in the uk i'm joined by paul joseph watson and richie allen of the people's voice now uh, gentlemen it was 
actually after Bilderberg last year, if I'm correct, that the Snowden documents were leaked. We got uh, the anniversary, the first year anniversary of that coming up in just two days. Although last year on their agenda, as they said, one of the things they were looking at was big data. And they had uh, David Petraeus, I believe, uh, representatives from, well, we had Palantir there, Alex Karp last year. Also returned this year, as did David Petraeus, as did Keith Alexander, the head of the NSA. And one of the topics there that they put on their official agenda that they released was, does privacy exist? You guys uh, find that ironic? Go ahead, uh, Richie, let's get your comments on that. Well, yeah, to say the least, ironic. Yeah, I mean, timely, um, nearly a year um, since, um, or just, just about a year since the, the, the Snowden leaks. Um, I was really interested last week, not to jump off topic, um, but just to kind of segue a little bit. Um, John Kerry's comments on CNN, the Secretary of State, of course, saying that, um, you know, um, Snowden, uh, Snowden should come back, you know, to prove that he's a patriot. If he really stands over what he did and if he really believes in what he did as being the right thing to do, well, he should come back and face the music. And I was thinking watching that, well, <laughs> that, didn't go, that didn't go very well for Chelsea Manning. And I know that yeah. Chelsea Manning didn't go on the run, um, especially. And, and, and again, you know, we, we love the Internet and uh, you know, we, we, we love um, organizations like the People's Voice, like Infowars. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you guys again are going to have to help me out here because um, U.S. history is not my greatest subject. But didn't John Kerry once sit in front of a congressional committee not long after he came back from Vietnam um, on the side of um, transparency, on the side of openness and getting information out to people? I mean, you could choke on the irony of it, you know, you could choke oh, yeah. on the irony of it. Um, so, yeah, there's no doubt they're talking about it. And, of course, data and, and the mining of data and privacy and all of that, that, that of course, segues into the Trans-Pacific Partnership and, um, and all of that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in that. And uh, we're finding it's one of the topics that our viewers at uh, TPV are uh, really interested in. Yeah, I want to talk about, we don't have much time in this segment, but I do want to talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnership, how that reflects uh, what they planned for a long time. But, but, Paul, when we talk about them asking if privacy exists, I, I think when we look at that film of Ed Balls coming in with massive amounts of data on paper, on printed paper, they understand because they're the ones that have created this environment that you don't have any electronic privacy. I think, to me, I look at them and the fact that they were just roaming around freely in the area, what they really were protecting was the anonymity and the discussions in their meetings. They weren't protecting the attendees. They were protecting the meetings, the information that they were exchanging face-to-face -face on paper documents in a hotel that had been evacuated days in advance and screened for any kind of electronic listening devices. What would you say? Well, that's right. They're protecting the information. That's why none of them will talk about what they discussed. You know, they'll talk about there being intensive meetings nonstop. And as you mentioned before the break, it is kind of like a cult for the global elite. You could compare it to the TED conference, which about a year ago it came out from some members of that who were invited along, that it is a kind of cult. They're ordered which people to room with. They're ordered on how to treat people when they meet them. And it's it's very insidious. And I think that a similar kind of thing takes place at Bilderberg. Of course, we know they have these big presentations, then they have the smaller sub-conference groups. Certain people are allowed into those conferences, certain people aren't. Mm -hmm. So it is a kind of access call. And we even have pictures of certain Bilderberg members who seem to be ostracized from the rest of the group as they're out on the patio having cocktails. So it's very much an elite within an elite. Most of the Bilderberg members probably aren't even aware of the inner core and what they actually want. They're just being groomed to potentially go up the ladder at a later date. But with regard to privacy, I mean, look at Eric Schmidt. I mean, he's there every year. What did he say? Quote, if you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah, so I, think it, the guy I think Eric Schmidt could probably answer exists. that question. I think Eric Schmidt could probably answer that question for him pretty definitively, don't you think, uh, Paul? Well, exactly. <laughs> That does privacy exist, and these are the people who are talking about it. They yeah. they want to destroy privacy. It's not it's not how to rescue it. It's how to eviscerate it to an even greater degree. That's what they're discussing because exactly. their history, their quotes, tell us that. Exactly. Yeah. So you got people asking if there's any privacy left, so they can squash it because we've got Google's Eric Schmidt, we've got uh, David Petraeus from the uh, CIA, we've got. We've got Keith Alexander from the NSA. We've got Alex Cart from Palantir, who is there to data mine what these other guys steal, all the information they steal about everybody, and try to create relationships from it. That's essentially what Palantir is about. 
I think one of the most important things that can come out of this, besides getting people to understand this is actually going on, is how, the, how their structure is, what their plan is for the world. And I think we see what David Rockefeller's goals were, what he stated back in 1973 when he created the Trilateral Commission. We see that now coming to fruition in these uh, transatlantic uh, trade partnership agreements, also the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreements. We're going to talk about that when we come back. We have Richie Allen from the UK as well as Paul Joseph We're Watson. We're on the march. Stay with us.